just so you know, you're, you're on here with Scott Page from Pink Floyd. Uh, he's also a trepper there that does a lot of amazing stuff. Eric Elliott, the founder of Green Room, uh, who's a Webby nominated software developer, built Band Page, built, uh, uh, was a part of Adobe Creative Cloud. We got NFT Tree here. He's a leading researcher and strategist and guru in the NFT space. I appreciate everybody for listening to this. We're going to dig more into this space. Assuming you guys have more time. Is everybody good on time? Good right. on time. Brilliant. So what I'm keenly aware of and interested in is how the service industry is going to adapt to catch up to this. We talked earlier about how being an independent artist, you can bypass labels. Well, what that really means is labels are going to shift what they do and how they do it because they're not going to go away. They're going to provide services that support this. They're going to say, you can't do this without Interscope's NFT department. You know what I mean? Right, because right. we're the experts and we know everybody. You don't know shit. Right. And it's true. Kind of. They do know everybody. They have foundation, they have ecosystem. So in, in some ways, uh, I believe this is going to blow up and independence is going to go crazy. Then they're going to realize, oh, my God, we can't sell an NFT to save our life. What do we do? And they'll look for service providers. They'll look for platforms like Eric's, you know, and yeah. and that is where this gets really interesting. Who are going to be those next big players? Eric. Where do you, besides yourself, of course, because we already know the answer is going to be green room. But uh, other than green room, what, where are people going to be looking to find the support they need to be successful with NFTs? YouTube. You know, there's yeah. <laughs> right. No, You're just going to go out and start learning, right? <laughs> they're going to dig in and watch videos of a whole bunch of people explaining. You know, right now there's a lot of people learning. I, I don't know about the quality of the learning, but there's a lot of people learning about NFTs and discovering them through other artists on TikTok and stuff like that, right? right? Where they're producing little two minute videos. Hey, I sold this NFT and, and we, you and me, the community raised a million dollars, right? And then they're going to go into like background and like, how did I do this? And there's already some of the artists that we're working with are already kind of documenting their journey and talking, talking about like, Hey, I'm just this guy. I, I go to work. Here's my day job. And they show us the day job. And then they show us like, going home and, and grinding on the NFT stuff and, uh, and their music production. And, and you're going to see like a lot of that stuff. A lot of these people, as they're coming up, are talking about their journey. And you're, you're going to see a bunch of people just following along. Just like I used to listen to Jimi Hendrix records and play along, right, when I was a kid. Right. And you're going to see a lot of that, a lot of YouTube learning, and, but also a lot of platforms that that have been already mainstream are coming in in 2022, especially you're going to see like Coinbase NFT is going to drop their thing. Uh, yep. You're going to see Shopify has integrated NFTs into the Shopify experience. So anybody who's ever set up a Shopify shop to set up their merch drops, they might already be in that ecosystem and ready to just try it out. And right. then when they want to dive deeper and get more music industry specialized help, then they'll come to guys like me. Right. I have a question for you, Eric. How difficult is it to create an NFT technically? For instance, you, you've built code for years, right? Or you've oversaw people that build code. How difficult is it? Can any company stand up their own NFT minting service? So in terms of building the code, it's actually not that hard if you're a coder. If you have experience building stuff, then yeah, you can you can repurpose and, and re learn Solidity and, and build a smart contract. But really, for the artists, you don't have to do all that, right? right. There are platforms out there that you just upload some stuff, upload a video and Open hit C, the button. Right? And right. <laughs> right, if you've got MetaMask installed, you can go and release stuff on OpenSea or Rarible right now today. It's not a difficult process. And that's exactly what one of my favorite NFT drops of all time so far came from a band called TalkTime, who've been around a fairly short period, just a few years. But um, they partnered with a bunch of really great artists. Uh, there's an artist called Mod Mod who did my favorite of them. And they did this crypto music box thing where they made little music videos out of all the tracks on their EP that, that came out this last year. And it's amazing and it's great. And they just uploaded stuff on Rarible, pressed a button and boom, it was done. And you know that's a totally viable way for new artists to get started in this space. And then 
when you're ready, you can come and do custom smart contracts and talk to teams like ours and, and stuff like that. But even on our platform, you don't need a smart contract. You don't need to know how to code. You just upload your stuff and hit the button and it's done. So mm-hmm. it's going to be really easy, especially in 2022. These tools are going to be easier than ever. You aren't even going to need to install MetaMask or go and exactly. get cryptocurrencies from Coinbase or anything like that. You type in your email, you press a button, and you're in and you're ready to get going. And it's as easy as uploading a new profile yep. picture to uh, TikTok or Instagram. Yeah, the most important thing to think about, I think, as an artist is really the WIFM. What's in it for me? And I don't mean me, right. I mean your customer, right? So if you can be thinking logically about what's in it for your fan and building that into your your token, your tokenomics, basically. And again, your simple tokenomics can be like you said, you can upload it, put it up. But that still means like, hey, we built a plan. We know why these things are going to be valuable. You're going to be able to share in this because we've got this community that you're going to join. That you're constantly learning every day, but you're gamifying the whole thing because you may not give everything that you're going to do with this and you keep luring the people in. And then as people start to see the revenue they're making, it's crazy. I was listening, uh, Tree's been hip, 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 uh, hipping me to a whole bunch of really cool spaces. There are like these great things. And I listened to one the other night on the Bored Apes and it was unbelievable. The one guy was telling this whole story about how, you know, they were they were up one night and he couldn't believe it. He paid like, a, you know, he paid like a, a half a ETH for one of these bored apes and stuff. And they kept buying them because they were coming out and they did this whole thing. And he said, oh, yeah, I just I just I had to sell one of them or, or sell one of his thing. He just sold it for one point four million. So he was able to buy a new house. Right. So, I mean, when you see these people making money now, that wasn't the bored ape people. This is the guy that bought the apes. And then turn those things into, and the value of them went up. And so now when you can say, I got that brand and I can start building my own stuff on top of it, that's a great model. So artists should think about how do I create a a business model where, you know, because I think of NFTs as publishing. It's like a source and then derivative works. And how, what kind of role, rights and roles I can give to my fans so that they can generate money with the idea of it's, they're my sales force. They're going to go out and make stuff. I'm going to tell them how they're going to go make money. I'm going to design it into my token. Here's how you guys are going to make it happen for you. Here's this what I'm having. And now you've got this army of people and everybody winning. It's the craziest, coolest thing. Because one thing I'll tell you, the community around NFTs is extraordinary. The energy level is so high. So anybody out there, I recommend, man, just start looking for meetups around town. I go to one in Glendale here on Tuesday nights and they're starting to happen. You know, just start getting into that community and you'll see that it's a very interesting vibe. I mean, the the energy is so high. It's like so, and it's exhilarating because it makes you want to get to work. Okay, I want to be a musician now because I've got a way to sell my stuff and make things happen and generate some real revenue. And it's not like I need millions of people. I need, you know, we go back to the thousand true fan model, right? A true fan, somebody spend one hundred dollars a year, so I have one thousand people spend it. There's a hundred grand. Well, now it's really, I, it's, it's the, it's the, uh, the one hundred true fans. <laughs> I mean, it's really and, what you need, right? And think, and think about the this this community. I have found is way more open to collaboration and creative thought than other industries have. Been. You know, it's it. Everybody's always tried to own their little space. Now it's like, hey, what are you doing? What can I do? The the influencers got this right. Oh, I'm an influencer with a million followers. Let me find three others. We'll move into a mansion. We'll have four million followers. Live in a big ass house. And everybody think we're we're amazing. Okay, it worked. Right. Yeah. Do the same yeah. with bands. Find five bands that have twenty thousand followers on you know Spotify, and now you have. 80. <laughs> I, did the math. Yeah, I mean, the I big difference right. is that here's what's so cool is well, let's collaborate. And then we're all in the smart contract at the same time. Yeah, so when that go. object goes out, I get paid instantly, just like with everybody else. That makes everybody wanting to collaborate because it's like for me, when I saw this, I said, oh, I'm going to I'm going to go find IP holders and stuff and just get my little chunk. And I'm going to go get a whole bunch of these people to start be selling. And I'm going to take my chunk, 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 chunk. And it's in the smart contract. I don't have to go chase them down to get paid. I don't have to go audit their books. I just look in my wallet and I'm helping these people. And I don't need to own the whole thing. That's never happened where you do your thing, you get your piece, and you get paid forever. Like, and, whoa. And, and I want to say mind boggling. One of the things that's really intriguing to me is the underserved markets and the abusive markets, right? Like I said, we're in Africa, uh, Nigeria, South Africa, the Congo. These are very difficult governments, very difficult. A lot of gangsters running these businesses. 
if we can launch microfinancing to artists that earn a certain amount of money so they can self-fund, you can tokenize all of their content and they can bring in their fan base. They don't need to work with gangsters anymore. They yeah, you know what's fascinating, out, right? This is cool. This is a big oh, no. shift. What's even in interesting is the whole kind of the play to earn space. I'm actually now part of a company called Mega Goons, and Mega Goons is basically funding underprivileged countries, basically by playing specific games and being part of the community where we're teaching and educating them on how to do it. But they're earning money by doing things. So it's this play to earn model. So that's can be very powerful, especially in those, in those type of things. Now I can see play to earn getting to the point where nobody's going to do any work and they're going to sit around and play games all day. <laughs> right? That's what everybody's so I, doing I, now. I'm it's called the pandemic, dude. Uh, yeah, I know. But we got to get back to making stuff again pretty soon, <laughs> I imagine. All I do is put up my little projector over there up on this back wall and sit here. I'm working, honey. That's right. Anyway. Yeah, um, but play but, to earn space is something I think is going to be very interesting development. I, 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 Eric, you you've done the whole rounds where you got funding and you you leveraged your company and got a got an acquisition. What what is going to happen in your estimation in this space? Once I mean, you know, like I said, there's what four hundred and forty million dollars in VC money came into this space lately. Um, yeah. You oh, know, in what, the last week, <laughs> actually, in it says uh, thirty billion in venture capital. My bad. Um, yeah, thirty billion has been invested in this space. You know, what happens when all these big companies start to gobble up market share in this new world order of independence, independence? <laughs> so what happens? I think, I think we're seeing a transformational shift here. One of the things that used to happen is that um, companies would go and try to raise VC money, and it was a very painful process. You had to either already know a bunch of VCs or know people that knew the VCs and get those contacts all warmed up until they felt confident in giving you an investment. And that process could take months or even years. And um, a lot of companies that could have been great never got their funding and they gave up before they got that far. And um, it's not because they wouldn't have been a great company. It's because that model is fundamentally um, leaving leaving money on the table frankly when those yeah. when those vcs are so slow to pull the trigger on uh, on people that they don't know right they're missing out on this amazing opportunity to get in with a company that might take off um yeah. and like a lot of business models they don't require the ceo to be an amazing salesman to be successful especially in this space right yeah. all they right. all they do require is that you can build a great community and build support for your product and, and achieve product market fit. So what yes. we're seeing now is the ability to go out there and actually produce a bunch of NFTs and sell directly to the customers and then bypass that whole getting to know you with the, the cold <laughs> right. investor yeah, connection exactly. process, right? And now you come to the VCs with some actual leverage in your pocket, you can say, hey, we went out directly to our customers. We raised a million dollars without your help, right? And yeah. we can take it or leave it if you want to give us money because we can keep on doing this, right? Yeah. And that totally flips the model. It totally yeah, flips the script. I, I, just a perfect example is a company that I know, uh, they're basically called Frogland and they're building a metaverse. So they basically went around, because I know the CEO and all those guys and they're, you know, been working with venture and stuff. They went around to venture. They couldn't raise any money. It was a long-term thing. They decided to do it. They created their own to token, this frog thing. And the idea is they had the utility that it would own a chunk of the land in the place. They raised $4 million in 12 hours. Right. right. Selling their tokens and just blew up their business. So now they're funding themselves. So that's the, you're hundred percent correct because tokens now, and this can actually generate the revenue for your projects, right? You don't need to, you can do it. It can be a film project, a record project or whatever. You can actually fund yourself directly without mm -hmm. having to go to funding these things, using tokens and stuff. It's a great model. And yeah. Scotty, I'm glad you brought that up <laughs> because I'm going to take a moment to selfishly plug something I'm doing that you guys are inadvertently already going to be involved in. I'm making a film this year. I've yeah. always wanted to do this. I've been in, in film and TV my whole life. My wife's producer. I've done a million different things. I'm, I'm going to do a film that's going to include many known artists, a lot of emerging artists, and we're going to fund it through the community. 
So it's going to be pretty interesting. And I, that's something I wanted to just put out there because, um, you know, I think it's important that all of us are involved in this because it could be one, a hell of a lot of fun. The whole community is going to be involved. I'm going to have, you know, Scotty and everybody, you all going to jump yeah. in on this. And it's going to, there's a lot of people that I'm going to be able to bring into this. I don't know if you guys know, but I also uh, have done a weekly radio show for eight years, interviewing celebrity artists, working with large social media networks to provide success stories for them. That was acquired by SoundCloud. I now do SoundCloud radio. Amazing access to a bunch of amazing artists. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting. No, dude, it's like a perfect thing because remember all those people that are going to invest in your thing through the NFTs can benefit from your video, from what you're making. So it's all about the story. What is the story and the value proposition? You figure that out. And then you, all of a sudden people are going to start buying this because they're going to make, be little investors, so to speak, in your project. But it's not like just taking the investor. Like, you know, again, if you look at, um, you know, uh, 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 like what are the some of the crowdfunding channels, right? Uh, yeah, you don't right. get to... You, you're, 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 you know, you're getting behind your artist because you like them. Now you're getting behind the artist because I'm going to make money too, right? Yeah. That's and, like and a total if, different thing. Instead of just putting the money into crowdsourcing, setting, you can build that in and it's built into the smart contract. So you don't have to manage everything, right? And, and it's, it's, an interesting manage. Use, it's an interesting use case because there's so many components to a film, right? You've got, if everyone's a shareholder in the film, You've got celebrity artists that are offering things, swag, NFTs, signed posters. We've got a wrap party that you can upgrade to to be a part of the the screening, which has all of these artists there. You know, Um, there's the whole community around there. There's there's the ability for brands to buy in from all over the world, you know, because we're in the Nordics. We're in we're in Africa. We're in America, um, Canada, all over the place. This is a big experiment for me, but it's really exciting because when you think of all the things you can tokenize from experiences to to content, to the music in the film, to even everything, it's pretty interesting. You start putting AI in there now and what happens is this film can can grow and can change over time. I might buy a film that's constantly changing, right? So I'm going to go watch it again because it's changing automatically. I mean, that's, that's what... This is like so powerful. This is the gamification of this stuff. That's like crazy. So, you know, BT, you know, the musician guy, he's a, he's a programmer and all of that. He did an incredible drop where he created this music, depending on where you are in the world, the time of day, it constantly is evolving and changing. So now that happens. And so you're like, this is like, it's like (sighs) your mind is exploding with the possibilities, right? You know, it's interesting because jo- Joseph Gordon-Levitt, that the actor, he was in uh, Inception. He he created a site where everyone could contribute. You got? Are you aware of this? It was great. It was it was early. He should do it if it's not Way happening early. right now. It should <laughs> happen right now. But he had creators all over the world that would provide music. They'd provide a voiceover. They'd provide graphics. They'd provide effects. It was awesome, right? Or is awesome? I don't know if it's still going. I got to. He innovated. He innovated yeah. big time. It was cool. And, yeah. and if that's not going now, he should re-up that because that's that's what the beauty of this and the collaboration, being able to yeah. tokenize digital shit can do yeah. for us. Yeah. You know, you know, I wanted to ask Tree, Tree, you're because you're out there and stuff, which is what what is give us a give me a handle on what do you think is some of the most innovative to, you know drops you're seeing right now? Because it really gets into that what you get when you get the token, right? What do you think's out there right now that's really interesting? Well, I can talk about one that just happened a week ago that I was a part of uh, generally, but that's the Psychedelics Anonymous one. Um, there's a, a known ape named Volterra. He created a what's called the whitelist game. And so what was happening was people were uh, people who didn't have a lot of money weren't able to get to- community tokens at a small price because whales would come in and, and buy like a hundred of them and and then max the gas and price the little guy out. So uh, the NFT space innovated into uh, whitelists or pre-sale lists so that uh, people could get their token individually if they wanted it, but still let the uh, the whales you know, buy mass amounts of uh, collections. So um, Volterra uh, innovated on that a couple months ago and he created the whitelist game and it was a, blew up on Twitter and it kind of became a little uh, cultural niche of the NFT community. And he was, he's a businessman out of Australia and he was driving with, um, with a team around Psychedelics Anonymous, which is uh, looking mental health, um, research about psychedelics, but also merchandise 
um, heavily on, heavily on, um, heavy on the merch. And so it's really cool because what they did was they were able to collect 8,000 unique wallets and holders who actually wanted to be a part of the community. And their total supply was 9,500. And on pre-sale, they sold out um, to the whitelist members about 7,500. And then when they went to public sale, they instantly sold out. But what's happened is that um, there have been a lot of sales, but most of the people are trading within the community or people buying in. So the unique ownership is still around 7,000, which is something no other collections ever been able to achieve, which is unique holders. Um, so community members, right, who are invested in the project. And so they invested a lot of money. They, they made sure their contract was really well um, orchestrated. And um, when I purchased as well, it was the first time. So they had a, their drop had four different NFTs you could buy. And um, they were all around the Genesis. And the way that you bought them was through a website in a bundled transaction. And if you lost uh, gas or you weren't able to mint the transaction, it would instantly refund you the money. So it already had a mechanism for refund. So a lot of innovation taking place on the ground scale with a lot of these Web3 creators. Um, whereas I think a lot of the larger platforms have some of that stuff pre-built in. A lot of the, the drops like this are, are creating. And just you know, from that, I, I created a new Twitter account with that profile avatar and people are following each other. And currently, you know, I have like 300 followers from that over you know a 24 hour period because we're just all connecting as a community and starting to create subculture and area. And this is exactly kind of like what the apes happened is there's a lot of like community members gathering. Um, and it's really amazing because I know like as a holder, right, I'll have value and can do different things since I own the token. Um, and inherently, like if, if we ever were at a level of the apes, we can all collectively galvanize money or our value within the, the community to create some kind of trust or value trusts for our assets to retain value over, you know, long periods of time. So I think the way that, you know, going about it like that, where you create a sec selective list, you use high business integrity with a clear mission, and you deliver to individual holders really as a uh, driven value in this project. And it, it minted at 0 0.08. And um, currently the floor is like 1.1 um, ETH. So um, and that's only been from a week. So it's a very good, uh, very good job. Yeah, so one of the things I so all of, all of the people that aren't really hip to the space have no idea what you just said for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just, uh, for the record, an ape and a bunch I'm, of whales sorry, and the no, shit no, was no. minting at the ETH below. Yeah, but the point is, is that doesn't matter. What you got to do is get people to start <laughs> hearing the language and they hear it more and more. No, but, but yeah. let's clear it up. What is an ape? Uh, I'm sorry. What is an ape? An ape, yeah. So a board ape yacht club, right? So if you, I think okay. if anybody says ape in the space, are generally starting at the top, which would be the board ape yacht club. Okay, which board is a, a, yeah the most just, culturally relevant community right now. Just just Google it. it. It's basically a metaverse that's that's selling NFTs of of these ape heads and a bunch of other things and experiential. Uh, this is and that's in their community. It's it's worth checking out. It's pretty cool. I, I um, wanted to throw one thing in just real quick. One of the opportunities right now for everybody out there, it's just like when Twitter started, there was a small community and everybody follows everybody else. Yeah. Right? right. So you can blow up a community very quickly now because this space is so on fire. People are just going in and following everybody on NFTs. It's a kind of a thing. So this is it. it once the platform, once this gets more mature, it's going to be harder to grow that audience. But right now is that moment in time to go build your audience. And it's happening on Twitter and Discord. So it's like a revival of Twitter again, because kind of Twitter went through this thing where all these other Instagram and all these other things blew up. But now Twitter's got space again, which is really cool the way those work. And it's an opportunity now for everybody to blow up your own. So anybody get in there, go in, start following everybody on NFTs and get in the game and you can start blowing up your audience. And that'll be important because those are going to be the people that are going to buy your stuff right and, now. And that's why it went to whitelisting is because community members were having a hard time getting a hold of tokens that at a fair price for them, right? So one Ethereum, $4,000 usually prices a lot of people out. Uh, most people aren't going to buy an NFT over Ethereum, um, just generally speaking. So, so they went with these exclusive lists so people who would participate in the community and Discord and yeah. stuff could have the access to the token and then be a benefit holder, even if they weren't going to spend a lot of money, which is extremely valuable to the communities and to the people themselves. So really, too, you know, if you get yourself you know, out there, you'll be able to have access to these things where you pay like 
$200 or people give you stuff for free. I've gotten free community tokens and stuff like that. So it's a great way to, to really find kind of a niche in that way and, and to see what communities you, you jive with. Yeah, yeah. Describe whitelisting. Would you yeah, guys describe whitelisting? Oh, I'm sorry. And, we'll and, and, then, and then after we do that, I'm going to have to wrap it up because I think we're over an hour here. I'm probably going to break this into two podcasts just so we could keep it because there's a lot that we covered today, which is, which is great. Stoked. So back to you. What is whitelisting? Yeah. So whitelisting, I guess it's a, I mean, uh, uh, there's anyway, it's a term around just creating a, an exclusive kind of list or creating a space for your community that you know is going to engage with your product and with your mission um, to feel exclusive, to feel like a place where people who didn't take that chance to get onto the list, who who weren't invested in the community will then now be looking on the outside in, right? So anybody who wasn't on the list that I was, you know, a couple of weeks ago, didn't get the chance to do this. And either they have to pay, you know, now 4,000 or $5,000 to be in, or they're going to, you know, have the FOMO, right? So the list is as a way of kind of delineating, delineating between, you know, community members that want to purchase a lot or who want to be involved and, and people and just outside traction, outside interest and, and other people seeing that way. And so you, they've leveraged this list in a really kind of unique way. And I think, you know, that's going to fade away as uh, more of these platforms, with you know ease of access come along, um, but it's going to be always a unique thing because there's always exclusive communities, speak easies, if you will, that that people want to have access to. So NFTs is really a great great way to create those things. So just yeah. a, a fun time, really. Yeah, it's so a pre-sale, right? It's really pre-selling it before you launch it. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It solves the race problem because what what would happen is you would drop a drop. And then everybody that wants it would come and try to buy it at the same time, which would drive the price of, of so there's transaction fees whenever you buy an NFT and it would drive those fees way up by clogging the network. And then it would be really hard for people to get mm. to purchase, right? And they'd sell out in seconds, like boom, <laughs> they're just gone, right? So the really big collections, the the they've figured out, well, if we set up a whitelist beforehand, before the race, we can kind of avoid that happening in the first place. And another problem that you see is bots. People have people replicate a ton of different accounts and act like, you know, so it's one person behind it or one gigantic crypto fund with a billion dollars in their pockets. They'll set up a ton of these bots and those bots will be smart contracts themselves. And they'll just flood the smart contract as soon as the drop drops. And then nobody else has a chance to get anything. And in that way, a lot of the tokens go to one major actor in the ecosystem or one or two hmm. major actors in the right. ecosystem. And then you don't get that community ownership. You don't get the decentralization of ownership in the collection. So it's a, And it's a security a layer process. for the community yeah. creators, but it's exactly. also a security layer for the community members themselves, yeah. right? Because I don't yeah. want a lot of bots to grab, you know, so being a part yeah. of this community, I know that most of the people that have it are more people, right? Yeah. Um, so on, it works on both sides. When there's a lot more real people involved in it and not just one person holding most of the tokens, then that brings more valuable to the entire community, including that one person with the bot. So it's so, good so, for everybody to decentralize it a bit. So that, that's what whitelisting is. Essentially, you're ad identifying who those real people are. Got it. And pre-selling and knowing when you do your drop, you're going to sell it. Absolutely. Because, I mean, I get, you know, another example, just going back to the fact that, you, that, that I wanted to bring up earlier was we working with, a, I don't want to say the name, but a major act that had a huge event, big pay-per-view on multiple channels, massive, just an incredible thing, massive audience, all of this stuff. They thought that they could drop the 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 drop the day of this big event that's going to go on and they drove a lot of money to the marketing and all of that stuff and they sold one token <laughs> right they spent tons of money because it just went out the regular public market isn't where it's these communities getting in there building your tribe so that that uh, psychedelic thing they went from like a few hundred to a 90,000 people within a couple two to three months and so where, that where audience do you, hmm? where where do you build that tribe i think that it's so confusing for most people where all of this happens where do i go and how do i build my twitter follow so currently yeah, yeah currently where the, do the i go main you know places i would say are clubhouse um twitter and Discord, right? So uh, multifaceted. So the the, the the two would be Clubhouse and Twitter if you want to go talk to people 
or, you know, see some traction. And then Discord's really the place where you can interact with the community creators and the community itself because you have that hub. And, and I, I do think that Discord changes or goes away when we have more metaverse capabilities or more things like that. But, but currently it is the vehicle um, because it is more server-based. You can create, you know, specific kind of platforms and bots and security. Um, and just saying that, just be careful. Uh, there's a lot of scam drops that come from Instagram, which doesn't mean that everyone is, but there's a lot that come from there. And also with Discord, don't click any links. Don't uh, direct message anybody you don't know. Um, there's a lot of security and unsafety in some of these channels because there's a lot of bad actors acting that way. So even when you are you building know. the tribe, you'll be able to see those differences. Yeah, even people you do know, because people will use the same username and reach out to you and say, hey, I'm the admin of this thing. And I want to give you a chance to get in early. And here's what you have to do. You go over here, plug in your private key. And Ooh. now all your money's gone. All right. So, yeah. oh. private key. Never give your private key. Never I, give never, away never, your private never. key. Never, never, never. Rule number one. Crypto never, number yeah. one. I just want to say because and I know go we're slow. Get go slow in the space. Yeah. Yeah. That that's what I was going to say. Everybody out there, this is not something you just, you know, you want. You've got to get educated, right? You've got to learn this. You got to learn how to how to secure your crypto assets, right? Learn how hard wallet, hardware wallets work. Learn ways because you could easily lose everything. You know, if you lose your password, your seed, all of that stuff, your seed is a special code that you have that allows you to get to your stuff. You lose that, Good it's toast. done, man. So this is a space you want to get in and start early. But I really suggest it's a combination, not just NFTs, it's crypto in general. So I suggest everybody should go to like Coinbase, Get a wallet, take a hundred bucks or a couple hundred dollars, put it in that wallet and just start playing around and understanding. But here's the pro tip. Go spend the 25 to 30 hours inside YouTube and Googling and start learning this stuff. And there's one girl that I really like, and I think she's really good at explaining and throwing. She goes by the name of Crypto Casey. So you can Google Crypto Casey, and she's a fantastic because she's so clear the way she describes things, and she's very savvy in the space. And you can learn how to use how to use hardware wallets, what are NFTs, how to trade Bitcoin, what's this thing? She's telling the market, but it's very good. But you must you got to you've got to learn how to do this, otherwise you could just get wiped out. So I was going to say too, we you were talking about this earlier. It's, it really is the choice of the consumer. You can be extremely DeFi and have hardware wallets and no crypto through and through, or you know you can find your various levels and maybe it is just buying an NFT with your credit card through a third party purchaser site, right? So it, it find the safety level, the risk tolerance that you have. Go slow, learn over time, and and you know go with what you have. Because I have a high risk tolerance, so I went you know very deep, but uh, people that I've talked to, I, I send them in other directions just because I know that that's more of the space that they're comfortable in. So, so taking your time in the space and finding, you know, the channels that work for you and, and taking risks slowly is, is the best, best, best method. And um, yeah. All right, you guys. Well, on this New Year's Eve, 2021, Woo. second year of a global freaking pandemic and one of the biggest web social changes in in the industry uh we are about to head into 2022 um yep. but we got to wrap this show up man because we might be in 2022 if we just keep talking <laughs> <laughs> well, we could we could definitely we got, keep talking we got <laughs> stuff to do so look this is this is unraveling the mysteries behind nft crypto blockchain and the metaverse for the music industry and beyond i've got mr eric elliott here founder of green room go check out green room uh, Eric is a G in this space and knows what he's doing. So go check him out. We've got Mr. NFT Tree in the house, who's a specialist in NFTs and a strategist and, and does many things in this space. If you want to find these guys, we're going to post their uh, social media. Uh, I know that we've got at Green Room, which is R U H M for Eric. Uh, Scott Page is I am Scott Page on, uh, on what? Everywhere. I'm Dylan Berry official on everything. That's D-Y-L-A-N-B-E-R-R-Y on everything. You could just Google Dylan Berry too. And uh, Tree, where are you at? NF Tree, uh, three E's. And I also uh, just opened my second account with that Psychedelics Anonymous called Mr. Mick Lee. Um, so either one of those. They're and both and if you... 
if you join Psychedelics Anonymous, he's giving out free LSD no, to anyone no, who no, follows no, him. No, he'll, no. Get, he'll shift it to you in, in the no, form of an NFT. Not a medical advisor in any capacity. Not a medical advisor in any You're going to get a hell of a lot of followers almost instantly. Uh, anyway, my name is Dylan Berry. I uh, appreciate you all for being here. Scott Page, the man, the legend. Uh, we will see... You, if anybody's at uh, Sundance and if anybody. Oh, yeah, at- we got a lot. Of, let me do little quick things. We've got a whole bunch of stuff coming up for our little podcast. We're going to be at CES uh, doing Nifty Agenda here coming up on January 6th. Uh, then we're in uh, Sundance on the 23rd and 24th for that. Uh, NFTs. Then we go to South by Southwest. We're going to be there for a whole thing that's going on. And then if you're in LA, we're doing NFT LA, March 28th, 29th, and 30th. We just got Mark Cuban is now going to be our keynote speaker. And we've got uh, Michael Casey, the content, uh, you know, the chief content officer out of Coindesk. Uh, It's going to be a really cool conference. And uh, we're going to be doing live minting and we're taking over the the Wisdom in Los Angeles. We're doing live shows. We're going to be doing live minting. We're going to be streaming in the metaverse. So it's going to be fun. So if you're around, keep following our podcast. We'll fill you in on that stuff. And we're going to be there. And we want you to be there or be square. That's right. Thank you, everybody. Happy New Year. And we will see you in 2022. Yay. Peace.